Hey, Miss Frizzle, where do eggs come from? Well, according to my research, eggs come from the reproductive system of a chicken. Right you are, Dorothy Ann. In fact, the egg starts its life as a follicle containing the ovum. What does that mean, Miss Frizzle? Well, as my great Professor Salvaraj used to say, when there is a problem staring at you in the face, hit it with a question. Oh, boss, do your stuff. This be a normal field trip with a friend? No way! Oh. Cruising on that main street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. Yeah. So strap your bones right to the seat. Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just to make your day complete, you might get baked into a pie on a magic scuba. Step inside, it's a wild ride. Miss Frizzle, this is the esophagus, correct? Why, yes, Dorothy Ann. This is the esophagus, which is also called the gullet. So what is that sack? The distal end of the esophagus has a specialized storage organ for food. This is called the crop. Hey, is that an oyster shell? <laughs> if we ate that, we'd have one shell of a problem. Carlos! Oh, look, it's the stomach. Excellent deduction, Phoebe. This is the proventriculus, or true stomach. According to my research, the proventriculus includes pepsin and hydrochloric acid, just like the human stomachs do. What does pepsin do? It's an enzyme that aids in protein digestion. Now class, this is the ventriculus, also called the gizzard. Hey, Miss Frizzle, are those wolves of the gizzard made of muscle? Excellent observation, Phoebe. The purpose of the gizzard is to mash up food using these muscles and the rocks the chicken ate previously. Fat will actually build up outside of this organ. Now, let's go down to the duodenum. But this organ rocks! Carlos! Well, this is called a duodenum, right? Right you are, Dorothy Ann. This is the first of three parts of the small intestine called the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Oh yeah. Isn't the pancreas nearby? Why, yes. According to my research, the pancreas sits within the duodenal loop and releases enzymes into the duodenum through pancreatic ducts. Welcome, class, to the large intestine, composed of two ceci, the colon and the rectum. The colon is a long, straight portion of the large intestines. The large intestine reabsorbs water. Whoa, what is that thing, Miss Frizzle? That is called the cloaca, Phoebe. The cloaca is the end of the digestive system. It also is known externally as the vent. Well, that didn't work. We still haven't found where eggs come from. Well, Phoebe, like I always say, take chances, make mistakes, get messy. So, we're going to have to use brute force. If my calculations are correct, we are now in the female reproductive system, which consists of the ovary and the oviduct. Right you are! In fact, we are in the left ovary, just in front of the kidneys and the abdominal cavity, because, although chickens have two sets of reproductive organs, only the left reaches maturity and is able to produce eggs. The single ovary is firmly attached to the wall of the cavity and is well supplied with blood vessels, which transport nutrients to the developing yolk. Wow! But what are all those yellowish, rounded objects? I believe those are called follicles, and each contain an ovum or yolk. Although, there are many follicles, only a small number will ever mature to produce an egg. Why are some follicles a lot larger than others, then? Well, the size of the follicle will vary from very tiny to those that are almost normal yolk size in an egg. When the follicle is up to 40 millimeters in diameter and contains a fully matured yolk, it is then ready for release into the oviduct. There are actually five different stages of maturity that can be found in the ovary. According to my calculations, 
they are primary follicles which do not begin to grow. Growing follicles, mature follicles, are ready are almost ready for release. Discharge follicles, where the yolk has just been released, and atretic follicles, where the yolk has been released a while ago. Well, where does the yolk go once it's been released? Let's continue our journey through the reproductive tract. Next is the oviduct, where the remainder of the egg is produced. The oviduct consists of five different segments, the infundibulum, ampulla or magnum, isthmus, uterus or shell gland, and the vagina. Isn't the infundibulum also called the funnel, and its function is to search for and engulf the yolk that the follicle released into the ovarian pocket? You are correct, Carlos. The infundibulum is up to nine centimeters long and is just adjacent to the ovary. Once it collects the yolk, the yolk remains in it for about 15 minutes, and it is here that fertilization by the male sperm takes place. The fertilized ovum then moves into the magnum, or ampulla, which is the albumin secreting region. Oh, I believe the magnum is the longest segment, up to 40 centimeters long. And if I'm correct, it takes the egg about three hours to move through during this process, and adds 40% of the albumin, or the egg white, as it is commonly called. Correct! But the percentages of albumin can vary, depending on the several factors, including the hen's genetics, age, and or the egg storage conditions. Here comes the isthmus, which is about 12 centimeters long, and adds 20% of the albumin and shell membranes to the egg. Neat. It is here in the isthmus that the inner shell membrane is laid down first, and then the outer shell membrane, which is about three times as thick. It also lays down the foundation for the shell by forming crystals of calcium carbonate. The amount of crystals laid down is directly proportional to the thickness of the shell, and it takes about 75 minutes to carry everything out. Where are we going now? Well, according to my calculation, we are coming to the uterus, otherwise known as the shell gland. The uterus is a bulbous gland that's about 12 centimeters in length. It is here that the last 40% of the albumin and all of the shell is added. The developing egg remains in the uterus for 18 to 20 hours before moving to the vagina. The vagina? I've heard of that. Although its function is not 100% known, it is thought that it adds the pigment, or coloring, to the outer shell. Exactly right! Well, class, looks like we are entering the final part of the reproductive system, the cloaca. The cloaca? What is its function? Well, the egg is held here in the cloaca for several hours or less prior to being laid. The egg usually enters here small end first and is turned before being laid large end first. Wow, today's field trip to the chicken was egg-cellent. Carlos! What?